Hello. So today, as we can see over here, we'll be studying liquid state. So uh, this is basically for the ISC class 11 students, also CBSE class 11 students, and is also a part of your syllabus in IIT JEM and WIT examinations. This also will help some of the class 9 students to develop their base on liquid state as you have already completed in our uh, offline classes the uh, gas loss part you already know what are gases you have an idea of what are solids and you have already st uh, studied about the states of matter so we have designed this in such a way so that you can understand everything even the class 9 students can understand everything ऐसा नहीं है कि 11 का स्टूडेंट को के लिए बहुत कम पड़ जाएगा 11 के लिए भी पूरा कवर किया होगा लेकिन क्लास 9 के स्टूडेंट को भी सब समझ में आना होगा इस इसको पढ़ के और आ भी जाएगा तो लेट अस जस्ट स्टार्ट अबाउट द चैप्टर फ्रॉम द वेरी बेसिक एज यू कैन सी ओवर हियर देयर आर थ्री कंटेनर्स कंटेनिंग थ्री काइंड्स ऑफ स्टेट्स ऑफ मैटर दैट इज सॉलिड लिक्विड एंड गैस सो व्हाट डिफरेंस वी कैन सी ओवर हियर इज in case of solids, we can see these molecules are very closely packed. These molecules are very closely packed. There is no space between these two molecules or three molecules or whatever it is. There is absolutely no space. The reason behind solids being like that kind is strong intermolecular attraction. This molecule ki koi movement nahi hoti hai. If this molecules does not move, they don't move, okay, they can only move about their mean position, okay, so they have some movement, what is called rotational movement about their mean position, they do not move horizontally or vertically because they don't have any space my dear friends, they don't have any space in between them. While coming to the liquid state, the subject matter of our study right now, if you see this one compared to this one, then you will see, well, there is a lot of space in between them and they can move around in a little bit vertically, horizontally but still there are a lot of molecules inside a small space when you compare them to gases because when you say these guys, these guys are here Pura sarfira aadmi log hai hai Thik hai? gumta hai They do not have any house They are, I shouldn't say that but they are kind of homeless kind of guys who move around. उसको आप कहीं पे भी रख दो, वो उसका पूरा जगह ले लेगा। आप कोई भी गैस मॉलिक्यूल ले लो, इधर पे रख दो। The volume of the gas will occupy the entire space. If you talk about this room, the volume of the gas will entire space को कवर कर लेगा। तो अभी इसका देखो क्या होता है? Liquid का। Liquid एक drop आप डाल दोगे तो it will not occupy the total space. It will occupy a certain amount of volume. But huh, if you keep it in a glass, its shape will be cylindrical. If you keep it in a rectangular tank, its shape will be cuboidal. So the shape of the liquid can change, but the volume will not change in case of liquid. The reason behind is that intermolecular force is the most तो इसके कोई वर्टिकल हॉरिजॉन्टल कुछ मूवमेंट नहीं है सिर्फ मीन पोजीशन का मूवमेंट है दिस ओनली मूव्स अबाउट देयर मीन पोजीशंस दे डू नॉट हैव एनी मूवमेंट हॉरिजॉन्टली और वर्टिकली इन केस ऑफ लिक्विड्स दे डू हैव मूवमेंट बट इट कैन नॉट लीव इट्स सरफेस इसकी बाउंड्री होती है लिक्विड्स हैव अ बाउंड्री लिमिट होती है इसकी कोई लिमिट नहीं होती है गैस का Gas doesn't have any limits. It doesn't have any shape as does the liquid. Also, it doesn't have any specific volume because the intermolecular forces of the gases are the weakest. And as soon as I say the intermolecular force in gases are weakest, so it can move around, the molecules can move around anywhere. So it will just occupy any volume you give. So suppose I give a gas molecule of Hydrogen is a very small molecule, you know H2 molecule is very small if you really measure its molecular size but if you put it in a say Salt Lake Stadium covered completely that doesn't mean that it will have that small size the volume will be occupied completely so the volume of that one H2 molecule will be, will be calculated as the total volume of the stadium so that is it but liquid have a specific volume and they do have a boundary 
remember so they will have a boundary liquid will have specific volume they will have a boundary and gases will not have any boundary it will not have any specific volume it will not have any specific shape liquid ki specific shape nahi hogi but iske paas ek specific volume hoga solid ka specific shape hoga intermolecular attraction between the solid particles is the intermolecular attraction is so strong that it gives a specific a definite shape to the separate solid particles like if you go for nacl crystals it will have some specific shape if you go for some other crystals it should have some some specific space these things depends on different kind of intermolecular attraction between different solids but in case of liquids there is intermolecular attraction but it is not enough to hold them together to give a fixed shape it is enough to keep them together within the boundary intermolecular force of attraction in liquid is enough to keep them together within the boundary but not give them a specific or definite shape also it is enough not to behave like gases that in gases the intermolecular force is so weak so it cannot even hold this molecule together in a space it will it, it will find some other space to go there like that so now i think that the uh, concept behind the solid liquid and gas is already clear to you i just stressed on one part that is the intermolecular force because that is what will define the liquid state for you because as you have already studied the gaseous state so now when you study the liquid state gas log aapne padh liye liquid padhne ke pehle uska jo basic jo difference hai wo kya hai intermolecular force of attraction that you have to understand very well so whatever may be the reason whatever whatever may be the term surface tension vapor uh, vapor pressure evaporation boiling whatever we will be studying in this course everything will depend on intermolecular force of attraction to so, ek hi ko parameter hai intermolecular force of attraction jisko aapko dimag mein rakhna hai for any kind of interaction when you talk talk about the states of matter abhi dekho बेसिक समझनी पड़ेगी आपको देर आर टू काइंड ऑफ स्टेट ऑफ मैटर विच आर वन एक्सट्रीम एंड अदर एक्सट्रीम वन इज सॉलिड एंड अदर इज गैस सो वी नो वेरी वेल वन एक्सट्रीम देर इज सॉलिड एंड अदर एक्सट्रीम इट इज गैस सो इंटरमीडिएट एक्सट्रीम इस दोनों के एक्सट्रीम में बीच का वाला क्या होगा वॉट विल बी द इंटरमीडिएट पार्ट द इंटरमीडिएट पार्ट इज ऑल लिक्विड दिस लिक्विड लाइज इन बिटवीन सॉलिड एंड गैस so this liquid is having some property of the solids what property of the solid that the liquid have it has a definite boundary it has a definite volume what property of the gas that the liquid have it doesn't have any specific shape neither the gases nor the liquid so these are very important parameters that we have to understand so uh, our next topic or uh, we have to go a little deeper about this one so और तो लिक्विड का व्हाट डिड यू स्टडी अबाउट द लिक्विड वी स्टडीड अबाउट द लिक्विड इज दैट इट डजेंट हैव डजेंट हैव स्पेसिफिक शेप और किसका स्पेसिफिक शेप नहीं होता गैसेस तो इफ देयर इज सम गैस गाय ओवर हियर लाइक दिस गैस का पूरा भूत की तरह दिखता होगा कितना शेप है भलू में किसी को मालूम नहीं ये बोलेगा दिस लिक्विड मॉलिक्यूल इज जस्ट लाइक मी सो ही विल बी हैप्पी ओके एंड नेक्स्ट नेक्स्ट व्हाट डज लिक्विड अगेन हैव एनीथिंग एल्स दस लिक्विड हैव लिक्विड डज हैव समथिंग एल्स लिक्विड डज हैव स्पेस डेफिनेट वॉल्यूम इट हैव डेफिनेट वॉल्यूम इसमें गैस क्या बोलेगा गैस विल से नो आई एम नॉट हैप्पी इट इज अनलाइक मी सो गैस फॉर गैसेस इट इज अनलाइक टू हैव डेफिनेट वॉल्यूम बट लिक्विड डज हैव डेफिनेट वॉल्यूम ओके सो व्हाट इज द लिक्विड से लिक्विड इन से लुक आई एम इन बिटवीन यू एंड यू दैट इज गैस और सॉलिड के बीच का होता है लिक्विड ठीक है liquid is basically in intermediate between gases and solid or solids and gases now liquid will say i when he talks with solid he will obviously say dekho bhai i am not like gas i have a boundary i have some specific volume why he will why he why he will talk with the gases he will say bhai i am just like you i also doesn't have any definite shape just like you so 
this is the basic understanding that I wanted to give you at first before understanding or before going through the liquid state details. So these things will be very important for our next uh, topic. So uh, the next topic will be coming up in the next video. Hello guys. After the last video where we have studied about the basic concepts of differentiating between solids, liquids and gases. Now we will be uh, studying about the properties of liquids. So slowly and slowly we will be going deeper into the liquid state. So first of all whatever we have already learned we are basically going to reiterate this in this video. This will be a very small one. So please note down whatever properties we are going to accumulate from our last class today. So, the first one is, uh, okay, the heading should be properties. So, what are the properties of liquid? The number one property of liquid should be, this all the liquid uh, state that we are talking about, they are made up of molecules. So, all liquids are made up of molecules. There are some exceptions. So what is the exception? Are there any liquid which is not made of molecule? Well, there are some exceptions. Exceptions are exceptions as in Mercury. So mercury as we know it is also a liquid. I know it's a metal but it's a liquid metal and obviously here in mercury they do not compose of molecules. So they are basically composed of atoms. So here they are composed of atoms. Number two, we have already spoke about the intermolecular force of attraction. So that will be another property. intermolecular force of attraction. So the intermolecular force of attraction in case of liquids will be less than solid but more than gases. So I can write it like this less than solids but more than gases. So in case of gases, there is very weak intermolecular force of attraction. In case of solid, it is very strong. In case of liquid, as we spoke earlier, it is beach car, intermediate. Okay. So as we have already now known two properties. What are the what can be the third property? The third property can be intermolecular space. So what should be the intermolecular space with respect to solid and gases? In case of liquids, the intermolecular space as we have seen in the last class, intermolecular space will be more than solids. So it is just the opposite. When the intermolecular force of attraction increases, the space will come down. So it is more than solid, but less than gases. In case of gases, there is huge intermolecular space, which is not in case of liquids. Now, there is one property that uh, at this moment, class 9 students may not have done it, but uh, class 11 students are very much aware of it. Okay, just I am giving you a little bit hint for the 9 students. As you already know, one thing that te if temperature of any substance increases, the energy of that substance increases. So, as temperature of the molecules increases, the kinetic energy of the molecules also increases. So, if the temperature increases, Ke increases and there is one derivation part in we can prove Ke is directly proportional to absolute temperature. Absolute temperature means this temperature has to be in Kelvin. Okay. So, in case, this is in case of gases. In case of liquid also, the same rule will follow. So, average Ke 
here also will be directly proportional to absolute temperature so these are the properties that we, we uh, until now we have studied which is not in exact line with the shape volume so those terms we have already studied so only one term that i stressed in the last class is intermolecular force of attraction which is basically defining the properties of the liquids if you see because this point number two is defining this one also and this is average k which is also dependent on this intermolecular force of attraction in a way because k of the molecule if the k of the molecule is higher what is it? अब मेरे पास सपोज बहुत काइनेटिक एनर्जी है तो क्या करेंगे हम बहुत दौड़ेंगे तो हमको पकड़ना बहुत मुश्किल हो जाएगा तो ये दिस के डिफाइंस द प्रॉपर्टी ऑफ द मॉलिक्यूल सो इफ एनी मॉलिक्यूल इज हैविंग हाई काइनेटिक एनर्जी इट इज वेरी डिफिकल्ट फॉर अस टू स्टोर दैट इन वन प्लेस सच इज इन द केस ऑफ गैसेस सो इन गैसेस इफ यू इफ यू राइट इट ओवर हियर इन गैसेस स्टेन द पेन in gases uh, ke is highest so as the ke is highest in gases they are not closed they are very wide spread because they are just running here and there so space will be in intermolecular space you write intermolecular space will be higher so as the distance between two molecules increases the non contact force of attraction decreases so intermolecular force of attraction in gases will come down so see previously we went from intermolecular force of attraction to space and then to kinetic energy here we went just opposite so opposite explanation is also possible here just we went opposite how we said in gases the kinetic energy is highest so the intermolecular space will be higher and so the intermolecular force of attraction will be higher will be lower i'm sorry because this, if the molecules are very wide apart then the force of attraction between those molecules will also be lesser okay so this was the learnings that we have got from our previous class and i have just upgraded the level to intermolecular force to kinetic energy so another concept is adding right now into your system that is intermolecular force of attraction was clear in the last video now obviously another thing that is coming into our fray now the kinetic energy of the molecules as we can see over here kinetic energy of the molecules is highest in case of gases and it is lowest in case of solid so there is another parameter that is coming now in our mind so if we just chronologically uh, just repeat one by one the intermolecular forces is highest in case of solids and it is lowest in case of gases wherever the intermolecular forces is lesser the intermolecular space will be wide apart so intermolecular space will be high as in gases so gas ke liye intermolecular force is low intermolecular space is high and kinetic energy is also high if the intermolecular space is high kinetic energy will also be high because as the kinetic energy was high that is why the space was low that was the reason so that is it so now it is clear to you how the kinetic energy concept has come because in gases the space is very wide apart because the force of attraction between the gaseous molecules is very less so the space between two molecules will be much more so kinetic energy will be less okay thank you so we will be now coming up with uh, more detailed discussions on this on uh, things like shape uh, things like volume density compressibility diffusivity and many things are there evaporation boiling which will be studying one by one using this concept this intermolecular force this kinetic energy this concept will be used one by one for our understanding of the things that we already know the shape size volume everything we know but we have to understand in molecular level hello friends so uh, now we will be talking about some detailed properties of liquids 
uh, we have went through the basic requirements, basic parameters that are required to really understand the properties of liquids. The basic parameters were number one was intermolecular forces and number two was kinetic energy. So let us now dive into the individual uh, properties that we have already discussed and let us try to uh, interrelate or correlate the two parameters that we have already have explained with this uh, properties of liquids. So first property as we can see over here is called shape. So if you see if a liquid is stored under a cylindrical glass then it will occupy a shape or it will take the shape of the glass itself. If you do the same in a cuboid or a water tank, then it will take the shape of a cuboid only. So it is definite that liquid does not have a definite shape. That is definite. Now the reason behind this is, we have to go into the reason behind this. So the reason behind this is, this guy, this liquid have strong intermolecular force of attraction that we have already studied. Now this strong intermolecular force of attraction is enough to hold them together Please note down these things to hold them together. But not enough to give them a definite shape as in solids. So in solids they have a definite shape because the intermolecular force of attraction between the solid particles or the atoms of the solids are so strong that it gives a definite shape. So we have already discussed this in our last video. So here suppose if somebody asks you that what is the reason for the shape of the liquid being having basically you know definite shape. So the answer will be strong intermolecular force of attraction is enough to hold them together. But it is not enough to give them a definite shape as in case of solids. So in beach mein jo hai, hai gas, ye humne draw kiya hai dost. Ki we have drawn this to again correlate because gas will say, okay this is like me. So he will be happy. Now, we will come to the volume. So about the volume also we already know that the liquids does have a definite volume. So only thing that people will ask you is why does liquid have a definite volume? So in the, when we are learning or upgrading our knowledge, we should apply those parameters into our discussion or reasoning. So here also the reasoning will be same because if you want, if you want to answer with the reason that what is the reason that uh, liquids are having definite volume, then the reason will be again strong. intermolecular force of attraction than gases which enables them or right which holds the molecules together. So which holds the molecules together, strong intermolecular force of attraction than gases. It, it is having stronger, a little stronger intermolecular force of attraction than gases which holds the molecules together. So in this case the volume being definite in case of liquid, so liquids will have some definite volume because there is strong intermolecular force of attraction compared to gases which will hold the molecules together. Okay? So, 
दिस इज अरी रीजन दैट लिक्विड डू नॉट एक्सपैंड ओके लिक्विड डू नॉट एक्सपैंड लिक्विड डोंट expand normally normally liquids don't expand if the temperature difference is not very high then liquids will not expand there is no appreciable expansion of liquids with little changes in temperature okay so this is the reason again this is the reason again so this is reason for this and this will also ensure that liquids Won't have much space between molecules. Okay, so as there are very stronger intermolecular force of attraction, it will not really expand. It is not easy to take one molecule uh, from the other uh, to a larger distance because they are having strong intermolecular force of attraction. And due to the same reason. it won't have much space between the molecules so this is the reason why they are having definite volume okay our next topic over here is density so we will be studying studying density is very easy for us but it is very easy to understand just by drawing three diagrams if i draw three Diagrams which I have drawn in our previous videos also. So like this. So solids will be closely packed. If you take liquid, it will not be as such, and gases will be going here and there. So what is density? Density is mass per unit volume. So if you see over here, if I take same unit volume. for unit volume number of molecules in cases of solids in that unit volume is very high okay so number of molecules per unit volume is very high in solids and it will be more than in case of liquids and it will be again more than in case of gases because in case of gases the molecules are very far away they are far away from each other so in case of gases as they are far away from each other the number of molecules per unit volume is very high in case of solids it will be more than so the liquids and again the liquids will be more than gases in case of gases it is very far away so number of molecules per unit volume in case of gases Will be very less. So, if I consider same material, let, let us consider same matter or same compound. Let us take one. Uh, let us take water for example. So, if I consider this ice, this is water. So, I have thirty degrees Celsius. This is ice at say minus twenty degrees Celsius, and this is steam. Say so this is hundred and ten degrees Celsius. So, it is very clear now to us. that this ice will have much more molecules of water inside a specific volume so it will have high density it will have high density okay now obviously ice doesn't have higher density than water but there is a separate reason for that we already know there is hydrogen bonding which creates lot of air spaces inside the ice and that uh, changes the dimension and so that being brings another parameter into the system but suppose if i if i okay i'll not consider ice so any confusion may happen so just let's take it something and say okay take some hydrocarbons okay so take co2 so let's take this solid co2 this is liquid co2 and this is gaseous co2 i know co2 sublimes but it is possible to liquefy co2 so here in this solid co2 obviously the number of molecules per unit volume will be very high so its density of this solid so density of the solid will be more than density of the liquid and will be more than density of the gases 
So if somebody asks you what is the reason for higher density of solids with respect to gases or liquids, the answer should be in liquids, the inter again same, the answer is intermolecular force of attraction is more for solids than liquid than gas. Okay? So intermolecular force of attraction, you note down DJ. Please note down all these things. Intermolecular force of attraction is more for solids than liquid than gas. And that is the reason. So Intermolecular space is highest in gases than liquid than solid. So this clarifies as a so first thing is intermolecular force of attraction, which is most in case of solids and least in case of gases. And uh, our uh, then from that only we can say the amount of space between the molecules will be higher in case of gases and least in case of solids. So this is the concept that we require to understand the density. So actually you knew all those things. Only thing, only thing is that the parameter you didn't use is intermolecular force of attraction or intermolecular space in a molecular level. You already knew all these things. There is nothing new even, even for class 9 students. This is very easy concept. This thing is again in class 11. This is whatever I am taught teaching you right now is there in class 11 and this is for class 11 guys only so uh, I just want you to uh, learn this uh, because it directly relates with your uh, study at this moment I am not teaching you anything that is uh, out of the box or something here from here or alien kind of things I am teaching you only those things which are related to you because in safe added courses for IIT you should always learn only those things which are related to your uh, the, to the present uh, study uh, content that you are doing so that it doesn't create extra burden on you. So only the related things are getting covered. So for 11 everything is getting covered even if you do not know what is the ninth concept you are getting learning. So it, it is basically getting covered from the very basic level. Now our next part is compressibility. So what do we understand by compressibility? Compressibility, compressibility is Basically, if you can compress one state of matter so that its volume decreases by increasing pressure and without changing the number of molecules. So, in gas law, we have already studied that the, in the properties of gases, that gases are compressible. But in liquids, in liquids we have not studied. So, first of all, uh, if we, if we, here also we will draw one picture like this. If you see the liquid particles like this, they are quite close together, isn't it? They are quite close together. It is not that they are having lot of space between them. So actually for compressibility, liquids are incompressible. The reason behind it is, again the same thing, intermolecular force of attraction is more so intermolecular space, space is low hence there is no space for compression so see, it is the same reason. The reasoning is same. I mean, they go, molecule ke beach mein agar jada space nahi hoge, to kaha pe compress karoge. Molecules is not going to get deformed. Thik hai? So the molecules have to have some space in between them. As long as molecules will have space in between them, then you can compress that material. I mean, for gases, the molecules are having high space, lot of space between them, so you can compress them. In liquids also there is space, but the space is not that much to say that liquid is compressible. 
So liquids are generally considered as incompressible. Now, if you increase the temperature of a liquid, then what happens? We know that uh, from the last property of liquids studied in the previous video, that as the temperature will increase, kinetic energy will be proportional to absolute temperature in case of liquid also. So kinetic energy will also increase. So as the kinetic energy will increase, molecules will try to move far away from each other. So here what is happening? Intermolecular space is increasing. So as the temperature is increasing, kinetic energy is increasing. As kinetic energy is increasing, intermolecular space is getting increased and liquids are becoming sometimes or somewhat compressible. So some liquids are compressible but the amount of compression is very negligible with respect to gases. So that is why liquids are considered incompressible. So as liquid is incompressible, we use this property of incompressibility of fluids or liquids in some of our uh, applications. Uh, namely that you have uh, for class 9 student it is very easy to uh, keep in your memory because you have just completed the chapter of pressure and where you have, you have studied those Pascal's law and transmission of pressure from one place to another by, by or via a fluid or liquid that is the hydraulics. So its application is application of incompressibility Stability is there in hydraulic machines. Okay, so these are the properties that we have learned. We have learned a lot. If you if you just quantify, board If you have not noted down something, you can still note it down by pausing the video. So see, we have studied shape, volume density and compressibility and in all this the reasoning was same strong intermolecular force of attraction 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 so i explained everything with a single parameter till now that is strong intermolecular force of attraction and nothing else so intermolecular force of attraction and its importance is getting clarified day day, day huh? slowly so anyways uh, will come with other properties such as the, uh, the diffusivity of the uh, li liquids and after after that we have to also study about the evaporation boiling evaporation in our next videos okay okay friends so uh, this is this will be our new topic for the liquid state part so we will be discussing another property which is a very important property called diffusion. So in gas, we know that gases diffuse into each other. In liquid, practically we know but we do not know exact mechanism of the liquids getting diffusing into each other. So we will be studying that part right now. So let us first understand, I have taken two liquids over here. One is liquid A and one is liquid B, separated by interface. So liquid A has to diffuse to liquid, liquid B, I have just assumed, it may happen the opposite way also. And here I have taken two liquids again, one is glycerol and one is water. So if you put water over glycerol, you will see there is a distinct difference between the two liquids. Separated by an interface, this portion is called interface. If, if you keep that mixture for some time, it tends to break this interface and just it doesn't remain distinct after some time and if you wait for some more time this interface or the line that you can see between water and glycerol will go out so this experiment clearly says that obviously the liquid is diffused obviously it will take some much more time than if it would have been gases if it would have been gases then it would have happened in an instant. But it didn't happen that way in case of liquids. Now going into the mechanisms of it, we have to understand first what are the factors that affect the diffusion process in liquids. 
In liquids, here if you see, this is the molecules of A. Obviously, if these molecules of A has to pass inside the molecules of B, then the first thing they have to have is high kinetic energy of the molecules. So if the kinetic energy of the molecules is high, then the diffusion, diffusion will increase. So if kinetic energy increases, diffusion will increase. That is for sure. If kinetic energy increases, diffusion will increase. So if I compare between gas and liquid, I will see in case of gas, kinetic energy is higher than kinetic energy of liquid. So the diffusion of gas is or the rate of diffusion of gas is more than rate of diffusion of liquid. So rate of diffusion of gas will always be more than rate of diffusion of liquid because the kinetic energy of the gas molecules is higher than the kinetic energy of the liquid molecules. So here the parameter, the second parameter that we have discussed in the first video was the kinetic energy is getting used. If you see it is getting used right now because the diffusion will increase if the kinetic energy is increased. So how can you basically increase the rate of diffusion of a liquid? To increase the rate of, diff uh, rate of diffusion of a liquid, you have to increase the kinetic energy. And how do you increase the kinetic energy of any liquid? You have already studied this. Kinetic energy is directly proportional to absolute temperature. So if you increase the temperature, Ke will increase and rate of diffusion will increase. So this summarizes how kinetic energy is affecting the diffusion. And this also summarizes why the gas molecules are having more diffusion rate than the liquid molecules. And why the why do we say that liquids diffuse but slowly than gases? This is the reason because in case of gases the kinetic energy is high and uh, so the rate of diffusion is also high. And that is why the rate of diffusion in gases is much faster than in case of liquids. Now we will come to other parameter or the other factor that affects the diffusion. If you see over here, if this molecule tends to diffuse over here, it needs a lot of kinetic energy. So, suppose if I, as we have already considered this liquid molecules, so as soon as two molecules like this, suppose there are these molecules are there and it is trying to diffuse. So if it collides, if it collides, it, it will not be able to go into the part that it was to go. So suppose if this molecule wants to go to this side and it collides with this one and it falls down. Then will this molecule go to the other side and diffuse into B? No. Then, then what happens? And how do I explain this phenomenon? So I explain this phenomenon in this way. If collision increases, if collision increases, kinetic energy will decrease and rate of diffusion will decrease. Now if I come to gases and liquids, first of all I will explain intermolecular space In case of gases, the inter, if I just name it as IS, so IS gases is much more than IS liquid. So if the intermolecular space between the molecules is much high, so let us just compare like this. In case of liquid, it is like this. The space is low. So if this wants to go through this, it cannot, it will collide and fall. But in case of gases, if you see, this is very spacious. If this guy wants to go, it can go. So the chances of collision in case of gases is much less. So intermolecular space being higher in gases, the rate of diffusion is also higher because the chances of collision is very less. So as the collision chances are very less in case of gases, so you can write like this, as gas in gases, Molecules are wide apart so collisions
position is less and hence diffusion of gases is more than liquids so liquids will diffuse but considering both the parameters we have seen whether it is kinetic energy or position between molecules in both the cases liquids will diffuse but liquids will diffuse at much slower rate than the gases in case of solids the rate of diffusion is absolutely immaterial solids doesn't diffuse into each other but in some cases if you keep two metals together for years together then they do diffuse but that is very minimalistic with respect to liquids or gases so gases diffuse liquids diffuse but it diffuses at a much slower rate than the gases okay so after this we will cover our next topic will be evaporation and we have to understand how the evaporation occurs and we will try to go into molecular level and until now whatever i have taught over here is basically coming from class 8th and 9th levels nothing is alien kinds nothing is there where you have to really remember or mug up something ratta marne ke liye nahi bol raha hu samjho har cheez ko samjho you ask yourself yes there are some things that is beyond the scope which maybe there will be something which i will not be able to explain at your scope or at your level but mostly try to understand get a get a feel out of it so that you don't have to mug it up you so things should come automatically as a knowledge okay so next topic will be evaporation hello guys so after we have studied a little bit about the liquids in the liquid state part we will be coming to our fifth video on liquid state we have just studied at this moment the properties of the liquids on molecular level our next target is to move from liquid to vapor step by step we all have already studied the gaseous state and when we have studied the gaseous state after completion of understanding of gases and various laws which are related to it we went for liquefaction of gases similarly now we will go for the processes which involve the transformation from liquid state to gaseous state now our lesson in this video is basically about evaporation evaporation is about spontaneous change in which liquid will change to vapor in class 8 level we have already studied there is some subtle differences between evaporation and boil but we really do not yet have the idea or if somebody asks me that what is exactly evaporation and what is its difference from boiling it is very difficult for me also to explain to that person who is having class 8 and 9 level knowledge so we'll just dig deeper into it to understand the mechanism of evaporation in this lesson okay so uh, the first thing that uh, i want to say over here is evaporation is spontaneous change of liquid to vapor that is it so that is what we have already known over the years now now the next thing that we have to understand what is changing to what liquid is changing to vapor so i can write it like this liquid is changing to vapor remember this is not boiling this is evaporation now what does liquid have liquid have strong intermolecular force of attraction the only difference between liquid and vapor that we have seen in our previous videos is this parameter strong intermolecular force of attraction if liquid did not had this strong uh, strong intermolecular force of attraction then it would have been gases but it have this thing so only thing that restricts you from being a liquid and not going into vapor is this one so if you can break this intermolecular force of attraction then you can be a vapor 
as liquid will change to vapor if they can break this intermolecular force of attraction. Now obviously to break this intermolecular force of attraction you have to supply some energy. So that is for sure that we have to now supply some energy to break this intermolecular force of attraction. Now coming to the this car you are very well familiar if you are in class 11 that this is Maxwell's energy distribution curve. So this basically denotes, basically there are two points about it. Like gases, liquids also follow the same energy distribution curve. So in that case, the, what we basically mean to say is every molecule of liquid will have different K. So, the molecules over here are having different K, K and you can see a bell kind of curve in which some molecules are having higher K, some molecules are having lower K, some molecules are having a intermediate K or kinetic energy. Now, also, but they will have a average K, average K. So, I have shown this average K over here as this point and there is another point that I have marked in this uh, figure is escape energy you can see this escape energy so this is the energy that is required to break the intermolecular forces of attraction that is present in the liquid so if some molecules are having the energy to break this force of attraction, then those molecules can change to vapor. So, the fundamental behind it is, if you go to boiling, for a liquid to change to gas or vapor, to by the process called boiling, you need latent heat of vaporization. That is also energy heat energy obviously. Here you can see to break the strong intermolecular force of attraction and change the state from liquid to vapor, you need an energy that is called escape energy. So if some molecules are having that escape energy, they can just go away and form or join the vapor state. So if you see over here, if there are some molecules which are having more K than the escape energy, if the K is more than escape energy, I am denoting it by E, then those molecules will evaporate. Now, how will some molecules will have K more than escape energy and some will not. So we will go into it right now. In liquids, the molecules are very close together. It is not like gases here. So obviously they are having some collisions within them. That is very obvious. Even the gas molecules collide. So during these collisions, there is some exchange of energy between the molecules. And due to this exchange of energy, so there are in liquid, if I write it over here, you can note down in your copy a better when you get a lot of space. I, I may not get a lot of space over here. So, due to collisions, due to collisions, there will be sharing or transfer of energy. Okay? So, due to collisions, there will be sharing or, or transfer of energy, which will basically Resulting some molecules having higher kinetic energy and some molecules will have lower K. Okay? So some molecules will have higher K, some molecules will have lower K because if I consider that the all molecules are having same Ke at this moment of time, 
and the molecules start colliding so some part of the molecules will have a higher kinetic energy and so some will have to have the lesser kinetic energy because as per conservation of energy the total amount of energy will remain same so if some molecules are having higher energy some molecule has to have lower energy and this is very important some will have higher kinetic energy and some will have lower kinetic energy due to collision so after this collision happen some molecules which are having higher kinetic energy than the escape energy those molecules will evaporate so there are certain part of molecules which will be having higher energy than the escape energy will start evaporating now as we have discussed over here that some molecules will gain higher kinetic energy some molecules will also have lower kinetic energy so because their kinetic energy will be lower as they have given some kinetic energy to the other molecules so as some molecules are having lower kinetic energy lower kinetic energy so this lower kinetic energy is basically associated with those molecules which are remaining in the liquid so those for those molecules i can say ke is directly proportional to t which i have already explained in my previous videos so this is temperature so if the kinetic energy is lower the temperature will also if the kinetic energy is lower the temperature will also come down so this these are those molecules i am talking about which are remaining molecules after evaporation the remaining molecules will have lower kinetic energy you write this way after evaporation the remaining molecules will have lower kinetic energy and kinetic energy is directly proportional to the absolute temperature so the absolute temperature will fall down and hence after evaporation what you get you get cooling so this is the precise reason why evaporation causes cooling so see how smoothly we have come up from spontaneous change of liquid to vapor relating to it the strong intermolecular force of attraction again which is the most of the causes of all our explanations in this chapter is we have explained the escape energy for which the liquid can change to vapor and we have also explained the phenomenon that we have read in class 8 and 9 that evaporation causes cooling and the reason behind that so if i just go through again only those molecules which will have kinetic energy more than escape energy generally those are the molecules which are at the surface of the liquid because at the surface of the liquid the molecules will tend to have more kinetic energy than the surface in the bottom okay so this molecules will have the tendency to evaporate and this molecules as soon as they evaporate they are having more kinetic energy that means the lower molecules the bulk molecules are having lesser kinetic lesser kinetic energy as the molecules which are having more than escape energy are possessed with higher kinetic energy the molecules in the bulk are having lower kinetic energy so the bulk molecules which are remaining in the system will be having lesser temperature as their kinetic energy has come down and that is why the evaporation will cause cooling so after this we will just uh, go back to our system again first you note all these things and in our next video we are just coming up with the next video where we will be explaining what are the factors that has affected the evaporation rate so first thing or the foremost thing that we have learned new in this chapter is now at this moment escape energy so previously you have learned in liquid state intermolecular force of attraction then the kinetic energy of the molecules which is also very important and now the third thing that you have learned is escape energy if the kinetic energy of the molecule is more than escape energy obviously the molecules will evaporate another thing that i want to tell you is evaporation does not happen at 100 degrees celsius for water if you keep a uh, bucket of water at your roof or on your roof then you will see some molecules have already evaporated after a uh, good hot day 
So that has happened maybe at 45 degrees Celsius at 50 degrees Celsius. So evaporation does not necessarily mean that you have to 100 degrees Celsius. The reason behind this is all it needs is escape energy and it does not need any definite boiling point or it does not need that latent heat of vaporization. So this is the basic fundamental of the evaporation concept that evaporation is different from boiling. Evaporation is only happening when the kinetic energy of the molecule or the some molecules is having the energy more than escape energy. Kinetic energy of some molecules if that is more than escape energy that will escape or that will evaporate. So it is not boiling, it is about escape energy. It does not need any heating source. Obviously some heating source will enhance the evaporation rate but it does not need any heating source. It is the energy that they are getting to evaporate is from the molecules itself because the collision is causing the sharing and the transfer of energy. So some molecules is having higher kinetic energy and some molecules are having lower kinetic energy. Molecules with higher kinetic energy more than the escape energy will evaporate. Molecules with lower kinetic energy will remain in the bulk and that will cause cooling because lower kinetic energy means lower temperature. I think this is, has explained what is evaporation. Now we will study in our next video what are the factors that will affect evaporation. Hello guys. So uh, now we will be basically studying the factors that will affect the evaporation rate. So we will first uh, just summarize what are, what are the factors that we are going to study. We are basically going to study surface area, flow of air, temperature and nature of liquid. So I have just uh, sorted out everything over here. So if you see first one that we are taking now is surface area. So is cl in class 8th and 9th level we have already studied if you increase the surface area the um, uh, rate of evaporation increases. So I can directly write if surface area increases rate of evaporation increases. But what is the reason behind it? Why, why the surface, uh, surface area increase will cause increase in rate of evaporation? Because just previously when we studied the mechanism of evaporation it was very clear to us that the molecules at the surface will have higher kinetic energy and they will leave the surface. So if there is larger surface area then there will be larger number of molecules over the surface. So the rate of evaporation of the number of molecules that will be going out of the system into the vapor will also be more. Now uh, if you go in a little bit molecule, uh, molecular level before that I would again like to reiterate as the surface area increases number of molecules on the surface will be more so number of molecules going into the vapor state will be more hence the rate of evaporation will be more. Now, why does uh, this liquid particle does not evaporate and this liquid particle at the surface do evaporate? See, if this liquid particle has to evaporate, first of all it has to go through this distance. And during going through this distance, it will do this the the liquid molecule So, uh, if you remember in our previous videos, we have always said when a molecule is moving and it is having collisions with other molecules, then the uh, kinetic energy of the molecules will come down and the kinetic energy and the molecules will fall off. So if this molecule wants to go then this will collide with the other molecules which is, which is also present in the bulb and this will ensure that the molecules does not leave the surface. So it will not have enough kinetic energy when it is at surface which will be more than what is the energy that, de uh, that defines the evaporation rate escape energy. So, if the kinetic energy of the molecule over here maybe is more than escape energy but when the molecule has reached over here it may not be more than escape energy because it will lose some energy due to collision. So at this point of time it may be less than escape energy so this molecule have very less chance of going into the vapor state but the molecules on the surface if they possess the kinetic energy equal to the escape energy, they will break the surface or they will break the interface between the liquid and vapor and they will go into the vapor state. So now it is clear that why, so first thing is if surface area is more then the number of molecules on the surface will be more, more molecules will tend to evaporate and the rate of evaporation will increase. Now the second question which comes up into our mind is what happens to the liquid molecule which is in the bulk part of the liquid and not on the surface. The bulk 
the molecule in the bulk part of the liquid while going through that uh, part to the, towards the surface and then breaking the surface and going into the vapor space will suffer a lot of collisions. This lot of collisions will cause fall, fall of its kinetic energy and if the kinetic energy falls to such a level such that the, it does not cross the escape energy then it cannot escape so evaporation will not happen so evaporation happens only for the surface molecules evaporation happens only for the surface molecules because in the surface the molecules have uh, much more tendency of a kinetic energy which will be more than the escape energy so evaporation will happen only at the surface because at that, that place their kinetic energy has a tendency to be more than the escape energy and that is why molecules in the surface will go into the vapor state this is the precise reason why evaporation is called a surface phenomena but boiling is a bulk phenomena evaporation is a surface phenomena evaporation means the liquid at the surface will go into the vapor state but in boiling not only liquid at the surface it starts from the bottom you have to give some external heat it starts from the bottom and it goes into the vapor state but evaporation is a surface phenomena only the molecules in the surface will go into the vapor state so now i think the concept of surface area is very much clear to you number one if the surface area has increased then the evaporation rate will increase if the uh, evaporation is a surface phenomena because molecules in the surface will have kinetic energy more than escape energy molecules in the bulk will not have kinetic energy more than escape energy when it reaches the surface because because it has suffered a lot of collisions so takra gaya hai dusre molecule se dusre molecule se takra gaya hai to kya hua uska kinetic energy kam ho gaya hai kinetic energy agar kam ho gaya hai iska matlab uske paas utna energy hai nahi jo ye yahan se nikal payega it doesn't have that much energy so that it can escape from the surface and go into vapor state that is why the evaporation of the of the molecule which is in the bulk liquid will not happen obviously the evaporation will dominate for the surface molecules hence the evaporation is a surface phenomena so this is done next flow of air what happens if the air is flowing so this is very much uh, physical this is nothing to do with it so if the flow of air uh, over the surface of the liquid increases if the wind velocity increases evaporation rate will increase because the rate of evaporation will increase why it will increase because the rate of evaporation will increase because when the air is flowing through it it tends to take up some molecules of molecules of water from it because it will give also some energy see what flow of air is coming that means that is possessing some energy that is having some kinetic energy so it tends to give some kinetic energy to which molecules to the molecules in the surface because the air is flowing suppose this is the liquid surface so the air is flowing over the surface like this so while the air molecules is flowing over the surface wo kya karega liquid ka jo surface wala molecule hai uske sath air ka molecule takrayega jab takrayega tab kinetic energy transfer hoga to wo surface ka molecule ka kinetic energy बढ़ेगा बढ़ने से इट विल बी मोर देन इसके एनर्जी एंड इट विल गो अलोंग विद द एयर एवोपरेशन होगा कहा का सरफेस मॉलिक्यूल का नाउ इफ आई इंक्रीज मोर अमाउंट ऑफ विंड ओवर द सरफेस इट विल कम विद मोर काइनेटिक एनर्जी एंड इट विल ट्रांसफर मोर काइनेटिक एनर्जी टू द सरफेस ऑफ द लिक्विड एंड हेंस इट विल एवोपरेट now i think this is very much clear to you i have explained with the concept of with the concept of escape energy okay not just that flow of air increases rate of evaporation will increase because air will come air will come with some kinetic energy that will transfer the ke to surface molecules so ke will become e for who surface molecules and hence rate of evaporation increases so i think it is pretty much clear to you now see in your books also you will not find this explanation with respect to escape energy but these things are logical deduction of the theory that you have studied that you are studying right now one by one intermolecular force of attraction then kinetic energy now we have come to escape energy maybe we will learn something else in our upcoming videos but see i have used the escape energy theory to explain this thing this may not be available in your book if there, if there may be some text where it is available but i haven't seen in the textbook so 
it may not be available in your room but sometimes you have to beat up logically by the theories that you have learned so that is the beauty of science that we will study anyhow any the next is temperature this is very important so what happens when the temperature increases in case of escape energy you see uh, obviously we know that if the temperature increases the rate of evaporation increases now why does it increase that is the important thing suppose i take the same liquid suppose i take water and i increase the temperature from 60 degrees celsius i increase it to 70 degrees celsius now the maxwell distribution curve is constant for a temperature like this so this is for say temperature t1 and this is the escape energy for t1 okay so this amount of molecules is having more escape energy than more energy than the escape energy so this amount of molecules will evaporate okay this amount of molecules is having more kinetic energy than the escape energy now if i increase the temperature to, to say t2 so this becomes the curve okay so as soon as the temperature increases you see the curve has just shifted to the right side so the number of molecules if you see over here right now so see number of molecules now the fraction of molecules that has crossed the escape energy part is much more so this this is explained by basically the maxwell's energy distribution curve as soon as you increase the temperature obviously temperature is proportional to because kinetic energy is proportional to time, uh, temperature so if the temperature increases kinetic energy of the molecules will increase so much more number of molecules will possess higher kinetic energy than escape energy at t2 as the kinetic energy will increase from t1 so much more number of molecules will cross the escape energy so as soon as much more number of molecules is crossing the escape energy rate of evaporation will increase abhi kya hoga dekho fir se ek bar bata de pani hai 60 degree celsius temperature mein usme suppose 10 molecule evaporate hota hai theek hai 10 molecule ke paas wo energy hai jo escape energy energy se zyada hota hai to per second mein 10 10 10 karke molecule nikal jata hai abhi humne 70 degree kar diya तो पानी का क्या हुआ पानी का सब पूरे पानी का 70 डिग्री हो गया टेंपरेचर 70 डिग्री जब पानी का टेंपरेचर हो गया तब क्या होगा अभी सोचा करो 70 डिग्री अपना पानी का टेंपरेचर हो गया तो टेंपरेचर 70 डिग्री हो गया तो काइनेटिक एनर्जी भी पानी का मॉलिक्यूल्स का बढ़ गया तो अभी मोर नंबर ऑफ मॉलिक्यूल्स जो ज्यादा मॉलिक्यूल्स है पहले कितना था 10 मॉलिक्यूल था जिसका आपका एनर्जी इसके एनर्जी से ज्यादा था अभी क्या है टेंपरेचर बढ़ा दिए तो काइनेटिक एनर्जी बढ़ गया मूवमेंट बढ़ गया पोल्यूशन ज्यादा हो रहा है ट्रांसफर म्यूचुअल शेयरिंग ऑफ एनर्जी बहुत ज्यादा हो रहा है तो नंबर ऑफ मॉलिक्यूल्स पहले जो 10 निकल रहा था एक सेकंड में इसके एनर्जी से ज्यादा कितना हो रहा था 10 मॉलिक्यूल्स का अभी कितना हो रहा सपोज कर लीजिए 20 मॉलिक्यूल तो 20 मॉलिक्यूल निकलता रहेगा अभी क्यों 20 मॉलिक्यूल का भी काइनेटिक एनर्जी ज्यादा हो गया है इसके एनर्जी से क्यों हुआ है टेंपरेचर बढ़ गया है तो काइनेटिक एनर्जी तो बढ़ेगी तो काइनेटिक एनर्जी बढ़ा है इसीलिए तो आपका ज्यादा मॉलिक्यूल इवोपोरेट होगा क्योंकि ज्यादा मॉलिक्यूल का एनर्जी इसके एनर्जी एनर्जी से ज्यादा हो गया है सो आई होप ये हिंदी में भी समझा दिया मेरा हिंदी उतना अच्छा नहीं है तो फिर भी कभी कभी कोशिश कर लेते हैं तो हिंदी भी थोड़ा इंप्रूव हो जाएगा ठीक है नेक्स्ट इज नेचर ऑफ लिक्विड अभी देखिए द थिंग इज uh the nature of liquid plays a very important part when we talk about the evaporation because uh as we know intermolecular force of attraction which is a very important parameter in case of evaporation because more the intermolecular force of attraction will be there the escape energy will be higher jitna zyada attraction hoga usko todne ke liye utna zyada energy dena padega to escape energy zyada hoga na to more the inter intermolecular force of attraction more will be the escape energy so this is very important over here abhi dekhiye ether aur water ka example liya hai hum logo ne we have taken the example of ether and water so obviously uh, you know water undergoes hydrogen bonding so obviously water will have much more intermolecular force of attraction than ether is concerned so water will have much more intermolecular force of attraction this basically means escape energy part of water will be much higher than ether so if you draw the maxwell distribution curve for both like this so if you if you just want to plot the escape energy 
If the ether is having escape energy over here, then water may have the escape energy like this over here. So maybe very small amount of water uh, will evaporate. While in case of ether, not of amount of ether can evaporate because ether is having escape energy of ether, escape energy of water. So here you can see in case of ether, the escape energy is much lower than in case of water. What is what is the reason behind this? The reason behind this is the intermolecular force of attraction. Okay? Ether का जो intermolecular force of attraction है, वो बहुत कम है water से. Water से वो intermolecular force of attraction बहुत कम है ether का. क्योंकि water has hydrogen bonding in it, ether doesn't have any hydrogen bonding in it. So, as water has hydrogen bonding in it, intermolecular force of attraction will be higher in case of water and hence the escape energy will be higher in case of water and hence the number of molecules having kinetic energy more than escape energy will be lower in case of water. Now, if escape energy is more than the amount of molecules, then all the molecules will be more than the amount of molecules. What will happen? Less amount of molecules will be more than the amount of molecules. Suppose escape energy is more than 10 kilos. And in this case, escape energy is more than the escape energy for water. Let us take 10 kilos. And let us take the escape energy of ether as, okay, I will take 5 kilos. Now I take one bottle, one glass of ether and one glass of water. So how, what do you expect? Uh, do you expect that the number of molecules of ether which will have more kinetic energy than escape energy will be more? Yeah, obviously because the escape energy is lesser. So number of molecules of ether will have, which will have more kinetic energy than the escape energy in case of ether will be more. So number of molecules of ether more than escape energy will be more than that of water ठीक है so now it is clear ether का ether has a lesser intermolecular force of attraction hence lesser escape energy hence lower sorry ether has I will just reiterate it again ether has Lesser intermolecular force of attraction, hence lower escape energy, hence higher rate of evaporation. I think it is it is very clear right now. So uh, so ether will have lesser higher evaporation rate than alcohol, which will again have higher evaporation rate than water. Okay. So the reason is very clear because water is having high intermolecular force of attraction than the other two and because alcohol will also undergo some kind of hydrogen bonding so it will have some intermolecular force of attraction. Ether doesn't have any hydrogen bonding so it, it will have very weak intermolecular force of attraction and ether will be easy to evaporate. Now so these are the basically the factors that I wanted to discuss over the factors that uh, basically uh, affects the uh, evaporation rate. Another thing that I want to tell, because in the previous video, in the last part, I have said that um, evaporation causes cooling. We have explained why it causes cooling. But if I ask you, you put a drop of water that in your room, that will evaporate. But uh, instantaneously, it will give you a cooling effect. That is true. Because if you go to your bathroom compared to your room, your bathroom is cooler. But uh, can you really say that one drop of water in a room and it, uh, evaporating it, uh, does it really cause cooling in a longer effect, longer run? Does it do? It doesn't. The reason behind it is some molecules of water evaporate, remaining molecules have lesser energy. So there will be cooling, that is true. But that is instantaneous cooling because after some time, that remaining molecule will absorb energy from the surroundings and it will again gain the temperature. So basically the temperature of the room does not decrease but all in all there is an instantaneous change in temperature or drop in temperature that is there. So that we have to consider. There is an instantaneous drop in temperature and for that we feel a little bit of cooling but overall in longer run there is no cooling as such uh, in evaporation because though molecules that are remaining that that is basically absorbing the heat from the surroundings so this basically covers up your evaporation 
and uh, the factors affecting evaporation. Our next video uh, will come on uh, vapor pressure and its effect on boiling. So, bahut dheere dheere chal raha hai hum log because I do not want to rush you up. As you can see, I am also going very slow. I am taking time to explain each and every concept. ऐसा कुछ नहीं किया जिसको आपको ये रट्टा मारना पड़े या याद करना पड़े यू डोंट हैव टू मेमोराइज ऑल दिस थिंग्स आई हैव कॉन्सेप्चुअली एक्सप्लेन ईच एंड एवरी वन इफ यू सी आई हैव कॉन्सेप्चुअली एक्सप्लेन व्हाई द बल्क मॉलिक्यूल डज नॉट इवोपोरेट एट द सरफेस ऑन द आई हैव कॉन्सेप्चुअली एक्सप्लेन व्हाई द फ्लो ऑफ एयर इज इंक्रीजिंग द रेट ऑफ इवोपोरेशन वी हैव कॉन्सेप्चुअली एक्सप्लेन फ्रॉम आवर नॉलेज दैट व्हाई द टेंपरेचर इंक्रीज इज कॉजिंग मोर मॉलिक्यूल्स टू इवोपोरेट We have conceptually explained how the nature of the liquid, again on the basis of intermolecular force of attraction, how the nature of the liquid will affect the rate of evaporation. So everything has been explained conceptually. So conceptually, सब चीज समझा करो, कुछ याद मत किया करो इस चैप्टर में, because in many cases people tend to memorize this chapter a lot rather than understanding it, and that really causes an issue afterwards. Maybe. आपका देखिए याद करके इसका आईडी निकल जाएगा नीट निकल जाएगा दैट इज ओके आईएससी हो जाएगा सीबीएसई हो जाएगा दैट इज ओके बट इन लॉन्गर रन आप लिक्विड स्टेट को अगर समझ नहीं पाओगे तो बाद में प्रॉब्लम होगा इफ यू स्टडी समथिंग लाइक फ्लूड मैकेनिक्स इन योर मैकेनिकल इंजीनियरिंग कोर्स इन सम इंजीनियरिंग कॉलेज और इफ यू स्टडी डॉक्टरी पढ़ना है तो उतना फ्लूड मैकेनिक्स लगाएगा नहीं उतना तो मालूम है मुझे बट वेन यू स्टडी ऑल दिस थिंग्स इन इंजीनियरिंग पार्ट फ्लूड इज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट इन इंजीनियरिंग पार्ट तो दो सुगर इंजीनियरिंग एक्सपीरियंस For them, fluid is very important. Understanding the gas and liquid is very important to them. Thermodynamics will be an integral part of the syllabus, which many of them does not understand even at uh, very high age, or even I do not understand thermodynamics very well. That is true because it is a hard subject. So only thing uh, you, you can do, you can refine your understanding in this kind of thermodynamics, then gas laws, liquid state. You can refine your understanding. So more refined and conceptual your understanding will be. Life will be easier for you. So that is uh, that is that has to be done. So please understand everything conceptually. So we'll come up with next videos on vapor pressure, boiling, and others. Okay, thank you. Hello guys. So now we'll be studying about vapor pressure. Okay. So. Uh, previously we have learned something about evaporation escape energy and all so the next topic is vapor pressure and we have to understand what is vapor pressure okay you must have heard about this term in various places so let us go directly into this so here i have kept a beaker with some liquid in it and i have covered this with a round flask you can say now this things that i have shown here as black dots are the vapors of this liquid which has escaped over here due to higher kinetic energy at the surface i have already explained this in my previous video on liquid state so what is happening some amount of vapors are formed from the liquid like this they are hitting the walls But they cannot escape because it is covered. Now the question is: Suppose we can understand right now that there are some vapors of this liquid which is there in this empty space and not a part of the bulk liquid. So, what will this vapor do? This vapors will create some pressure on the liquid because it is it is not exposed to atmosphere. If it has been exposed to atmosphere, or if you just put this lid out, you just take this covering out. Then what happens? This vapor escapes, but now it cannot escape. So whatever vapor is getting formed from this liquid, suppose first one molecule is formed, then two, three, four, five like that. So the escape of vapor is called evaporation. And after some amount of time, there will be enough molecules of these vapors. and the pressure will increase right this pressure of this vapor on this liquid will increase theek okay. hai so suppose after some amount of time the vapors are so many that it tends to come back to the liquid phase again 
so liquid to vapor is evaporation and vapor to liquid is condensation so first the liquid will get evaporated some molecules of vapors are getting formed and after that those vapors are coming back to liquid by a process that we know as condensation now at a particular temperature and at a particular point there will be an equilibrium between the two which we have already understood in our chemical equilibrium chapter the equilibrium between two will exist such that there won't be any change in number of molecules apparently in liquids and vapors what does it mean suppose at the equilibrium temperature number of molecules of vapor is 5 and number of molecules of liquid over here is 10 so at this moment of time suppose it has reached equilibrium that means if one molecule of liquid goes to the vapor state one molecule is also coming back so the resultant is remaining 5 over here the resultant is remaining 10 over here if it tends to ek chala gaya to nine aayega upar mein 6 ho gaya 6 se fir ek wapas aayega to ye nine se 10 ho jayega upar mein fir 6 minus 1 that will come 5 so it is called dynamic equilibrium which we have already studied and that is what is happening over here so see this curve the red there are two curves that are drawn over here i have taken rate of evaporation at constant i have just taken rate of evaporation as constant so some molecules are evaporating i have taken two temperatures one is t1 and another is t2 t1 is lesser than t2 so first just analyze what is happening at temperature t1 if you see over here at temperature t1 the rate of evaporation i have taken constant okay so then rate of evaporation is constant Now, as the evaporation is going on, some molecules of vapors are getting formed, and it will tend to condense. So, as it is condensing, and as the number of vapor molecules is getting high and high, the rate of condensation will also get high and high. So, rate of condensation is increasing until that point when it meets the rate of evaporation, it goes straight to it. And this temperature is called the equilibrium temperature at which. it has reached dynamic equilibrium because at this point number of liquids going to the vapor is equal to the number of vapor molecules coming into liquid now come to number t2 t2 is higher than t1 so if t2 is higher than t1 then what will happen if the temperature is higher the rate of evaporation is also higher okay rate higher you have put some extra temperature which means you have put some extra kinetic energy into the system that means the surface molecule will have more and more kinetic energy in the liquid and it will escape through the liquid phase to the vapor phase hence the rate of evaporation is higher so what happens to the condensation as the rate of evaporation is higher the condensation rate will also increase rapidly because as the rate of evaporation is higher what as condensation rate depends on condensation rate depends on number of molecules of vapor creating pressure on the liquid right so number of molecule aapka kya hai this is basically product product ka aapka jitna moles badh jayega vapor reaction ka probability badh jata hai so as the condensation as the evaporation rate is increasing number of vapor molecules formed it has increased so as the number of vapor molecules formed it has increased so the amount of condensation the rate of condensation is also getting increased at a very high rate because the rate of evaporation has increased so rate of evaporation increase means number of vapor molecules has increased and hence called rate of condensation is increasing at a higher rate if you see this slope is much higher than this one clear hai so at temperature t2 it also reaches the equilibrium at some point of time This rate of condensation in this case, when the temperature I have kept as T two, is also meeting the rate of evaporation in a condition called dynamic equilibrium that we have already explained over here. Okay? Clear? So at T one you can see the rate of evaporation and rate of condensation is meeting at equilibrium point. At T two also it is meeting at equilibrium point. So there is no difference. All the difference is. इस केस में जल्दी होगा ठीक है इस केस में थोड़ा जल्दी होगा क्योंकि रेट ऑफ लोअर प्रेशर जल्दी होगा टाइम के साथ साथ बहुत जल्दी आ रहा है एंड द इवोपरेशन विल इंक्रीज नाउ व्हाट 
इज वेपर प्रेशर अगर आपको डेफिनेशन लिखने के लिए दिया जाएगा देन वॉट इज वेपर प्रेशर प्रेशर एक्साइटेड वेपर ऑफ द लिक्विड ये वाला एट इक्विलिब्रियम स्टेट एट इक्विलिब्रियम स्टेट इक्विलिब्रियम स्टेट मीन दिस स्टेट एट दिस स्टेट द प्रेशर एक्साइटेड बाई द वेपर ऑन द लिक्विड इज कॉल्ड वेपर प्रेशर एट दैट गिवेन टेम्परेचर टी टू हो सकता है टी वन हो सकता हाउ डू कैलकुलेट वेपर प्रेशर सिंपल है गैस इक्वेशन पी वी इज इकल टू एन बाई बी सी आर एन बाई बी आर टी वॉट इज एन बाई बी मोल्स पर लीटर वॉट इज इट कॉन्सेंट्रेशन मोलरिटी सी आर टी रिप्लेसिंग एन बाई बी बाई सी एंड वॉट इज सी कॉन्सेंट्रेशन ऑफ द वेपर्स दैट मीन्स द वेपर्स द नंबर ऑफ मोल्स ऑफ वेपर्स डिवाइड बाई द टोटल वॉल्यूम विल गिव यू द कॉन्सेंट्रेशन इन टू आर इन टू टी विल गिव यू द वेपर प्रेशर एंड यू कैन सी वेपर प्रेशर इज डायरेक्टली प्रोपोर्शनल टू टेम्परेचर इज द नंबर ऑफ मोल्स per liter is same and r is always constant so if temperature increases vapor pressure increases now see rate of evaporation is directly proportional to e to the power minus capital e by rt capital e is energy of activation by rt this is reciprocal so if t increases if t increases then this negative part decreases hota hai ki nahi If T increases, then this negative part decreases. Negative part decreases कर जाता है. So if negative part decreases होता है, तो rate of evaporation बढ़ेगा. Where do we start? We start it from if T increases. So if T increases, the negative part increases, and so rate of evaporation will increase. So if T increases, rate of evaporation will increase. So see, if T increases, vapor pressure increases. If T increases, rate of vapor pressure increases. Can I not say? Can I not say? If vapor pressure increases, rate of vapor pressure also increases. Huh? Rate of vapor pressure increases. What I said? Because vapor molecule is more than that, and vapor pressure is more than that. So, who was it? The temperature was T1 to T2. Next. Another very important factor that affects vapor pressure is nature of liquid. What is vapor pressure? Vapor pressure is the body temperature. So, just PV vapor pressure. किसको डिपेंड करता है इज डायरेक्टली प्रोपोर्शनल टू द नंबर ऑफ मॉलिक्यूल्स पर इन वॉल्यूम सेम टेम्परेचर में अगर लोगे तो सो वेपर प्रेशर विल डिपेंड ऑन द नंबर ऑफ मोल्स ऑफ वेपर सो व्हेन नंबर ऑफ मोल्स विल इंक्रीज इफ रेट ऑफ इवोपोरेशन हैज इंक्रीज राइट नाउ इन व्हिच काइंड ऑफ लिक्विड्स रेट ऑफ इवोपोरेशन विल बी हायर those liquids which have lesser intermolecular force of attraction will have higher vapor pressure because those molecules those liquids which have lesser intermolecular force of attraction will tend to vaporize more will tend to go to vapor state and hence more moles of vapor will get formed and vapor pressure is directly proportional to number of moles of vapor so From nature of liquid, you can say you can relate it to the A thing. Yeah, A tha na? Yeah, na? A tha intermolecular force ka. So if A is more for any liquid, then it means intermolecular force is more for that liquid, and hence. Rate of evaporation is more because vapor pressure was more. So vapor pressure is directly proportional to intermolecular. Sorry, intermolecular force increase हो गया. Sorry, गलती हो गया हमसे. Sorry. So if A increases, intermolecular force increases. That means it will tend to be in liquid state, and hence vapor pressure will come down because. If it tends to be liquid state, number of moles of vapor formed will be less. That's it. So this basically covers up your vapor pressure part. After this, we will be studying boiling point, freezing point, surface tension, viscosity. Four things. Okay. तब तक के लिए थोड़ा विदा लेते हैं. Hello, guys. 
now we will be discussing about boiling phenomena so previously we discussed about evaporation and there is a subtle difference between evaporation and boiling we have studied this in class 8 and 9 where it was said evaporation is a surface phenomena and boiling is a bulk phenomena but we haven't gone into detail now we'll be going into detail so this is pv the vapor pressure as we talked about in my earlier video so vapor pressure when the vapor pressure also have vapor pressure liquid ke upar mein jo vapor hai that wo hai aapka vapor pressure if that vapor pressure is more than the atmospheric pressure acting on the liquid then those vapors can escape hai ki nahi ye aapka liquid yahan pe ho gaya vapor with some pressure say pv and here your air molecules is giving some pressure say pa now when can this vapor go out of the system into the atmosphere if pv is equal to pa right if pv is equal to pa this pv this pv equal to pa then it is possible for them to pass through or more than pa then it is possible right so at that equilibrium point when pv will be equal to pa the boiling starts right the vapor goes out and as the vapor goes out more and more vapor started forming and they start going out until and unless pv doesn't become less than p correct so as soon as the vapor pressure becomes equal to the atmospheric pressure the phenomena is called boiling so when does boiling happen boiling is a phenomena for any liquid when the vapor pressure of the liquid becomes equal to the atmospheric pressure at a certain temperature and that certain temperature is called the boiling point right that certain temperature is called the boiling point so what is boiling point boiling point is that temperature when the vapor pressure of the liquid becomes equal to the atmospheric pressure then how does boiling point change man so boiling point does it change yes it changes the boiling point changes we have learned it, it again in class 9 and class 10 so how does it change if pressure increases now i increase this pressure theek okay? hai atmospheric pressure i am increasing this atmospheric pressure so is if i increase the atmospheric pressure i have to also increase vapor pressure okay so i have to increase vapor pressure then only if the vapor pressure is more than this atmospheric pressure then the vapor can escape and then the boiling will occur so i have increased the pressure that means now more amount of vapor pressure is required to make more pv is required to make pv is equal to p or t right so how will you form more amount of vapor pressure by creating more moles of vapor molecules out of the liquid how do you do that you increase the temperature you increase the temperature more moles of vapors comes out of the liquid and it becomes equal or more than the atmospheric pressure and it starts boiling so what can i say over here it starts boiling at a higher temperature right due to the reason that i have increased the pressure so if pressure increases boiling point will increase why do you use this pressure cookers hilly areas ya da kuch plus 10th mein hai ye 10th mein hai kya nahi 9th mein hai pressure ka chapter mein so hilly areas mein we use pressure cookers halka sa jyada pressure rehta hai and for that we get a temperature of around 120 to 125 degrees celsius otherwise in hilly areas the pressure is less so if the pressure is less then the boiling point will come down if it comes down it tends to boil at around 80 degrees celsius and the food will not get cooked at 80 degrees celsius so that is why we use pressure cookers now if pressure increases boiling point increases if pressure decreases boiling point kabhi ho bada bada This is also used in a very important phenomenon that is called vacuum distillation. Where sometimes we have to purify some liquid by method called distillation, that is fractional distillation, and we use vacuum distillation to easily purify that liquid by reducing its boiling point. ठीक है? Now, how does this vapor pressure, sorry, this boiling point depend on nature of liquid? नेचर ऑफ लिक्विड मतलब क्या है व्हाट इज नेचर ऑफ लिक्विड नेचर ऑफ लिक्विड जब भी आएगा आपके आपके दिमाग में वैंडर वॉल्स का ए वाला जो कोफिशियंट है वो आना चाहिए सो इफ वैंडर वॉल्स दैट ए कोफिशियंट इज मोर दैट मींस इंटरमॉलिक्युलर फोर्स ऑफ अट्रैक्शन इज मोर सो इफ इंटरमॉलिक्युलर फोर्स ऑफ अट्रैक्शन इज मोर व्हाट डज दैट मीन दैट मींस इन द लिक्विड द मॉलिक्यूल्स 
are attracting each other. So those molecules are not going to go easily out to the vapor state. So there will be more probability to remain in the liquid state. So number of moles of vapor come over. So if number of moles of vapor come over, then vapor pressure come over. A vapor pressure come in. आपको अभी उसको पेपर प्रेशर बढ़ाना है कैसे बढ़ाओगे नंबर ऑफ मोल्स बढ़ाना है कैसे बढ़ाओगे जो लिक्विड है उसमें थोड़ा एनर्जी डाल दो डाल दिया एनर्जी वो काइनेटिक एनर्जी मिलेगा उसको दैट काइनेटिक एनर्जी एस्केप एनर्जी को कौन क्रॉस करेगा करेगा तो पेपर फॉर्म करेगा पेपर फॉर्म किया तो नंबर ऑफ मोल्स ऑफ पेपर बढ़ा नंबर ऑफ मोल्स ऑफ पेपर बढ़ा तो पेपर प्रेशर बढ़ा लेकिन कैसे बढ़ाया टेम्परेचर से तो ज्यादा टेम्परेचर लगा ना अपना बॉइलिंग करने के लिए सो बॉइलिंग पॉइंट विल इंक्रीज इफ इंटरमोलिकुलर फोर्स ऑफ एट्रैक्शन इंक्रीजेस ठीक है बॉइलिंग पॉइंट विल इंक्रीज इफ इंटरमोलिकुलर फोर्स ऑफ एट्रैक्शन इंक्रीजेस क्लियर है ये आपका बॉडी है अभी देखिए वी जस्ट स्टडी बिफोर एंड एवोपरेशन ऑल्सो सो वट इज द डिफरेंस बिटवीन एवोपरेशन एंड बॉडी नॉर्मल है यू ऑलरेडी नो दिस so basically the difference is in case of boiling it is not any more a surface phenomenon evaporation is basically a surface phenomenon just at the surface it tends to boil it tends to escape okay and when i am coming to boiling of the liquid that basically means it is boiling from the bulk not only from the surface it is boiling from the bulk of the liquid okay clear Now next is what can be the another difference? One is it is bulk phenomenon, another is it is surface phenomenon. If a person is surface phenomenon, boiling is bulk phenomenon. Another important thing is while we studied boiling, we also understood that boiling happens at a particular temperature, that is boiling point. In case of evaporation, it is not so. Liquid is evaporating all the time at any sort of temperature. Yes, if you increase the temperature, the evaporation rate will increase, but There is no particular temperature for evaporation. ठीक है? Another important thing that we have to study after this is, so evaporation boiling हो गया, आपका boiling boiling point is also finished. Now we will come to how does the solid boil? होता है solid का boiling? नहीं होता है solid sublime करता है. So some solids are there which sublimes, right? Solids. Sublime to vapor, correct. So if solid sublime to vapor, it will also follow the same kind of relationship as we are we were doing in case of liquid forming vapor. Okay. So when that vapor pressure becomes same, then only then your solid will get sublime to vapor. The same phenomenon, nothing else. So the main thing is where does this phenomenon gets used? Milk powder. अमूल स्प्रे को मालूम है अमूल स्प्रे नाम कहां से है नो वेर फ्रॉम दिस नेम के दिस काइंड ऑफ ड्रायर्स ड्रायर्स ड्राई कर क्या होता है सपोज देर इज वॉट सॉरी देर सम वाटर मॉलिक्यूल इज देर सम वाटर मॉलिक्यूल इज देर नाउ इफ आई हैव टू ड्राई दिस वॉटर इन टू आई हिट इट ओके I heat it, so water molecule will get vaporized, and then I suddenly cool it, and it will tend to form ice. So what? Yeah? Ice okay? Evaporate can ice okay? Yeah, it's phenomenal. But some in case of this kind of drying, which is called freeze drying, which I'll explain to you right now. How does freeze drying occur? Very important. Keep that as a summary. और आपको समझ में आ जाएगा देखिए सपोज देर इज एयर एंड आई हैव टू ड्राई दिस एयर इन एयर देर इज सम वाटर वेपर सो वॉट आई आई कूल दिस से आई कूल दिस टू माइनस टेन डिग्री सेल्सियस ना वॉट विल आई दिस वाटर वेपर विल फॉर्म आइस आपके पास नहीं जाएगा तो यार ड्राई हो गया तो यार ड्राई हो गया दिस इज फ्रीज ड्राई नथिंग एल्स दिस इज फ्रीज ड्राई ओके 
So by freezing, you are knocking off the water vapor out of the system. In case of milk, what happens? They take some milk from a meal like this and they cool up to minus 10 degrees Celsius. What will happen? Water will form ice, knocked off, and given with solid milk. Okay? Solid milk. And there, there is an erector type of thing where the milk is spread and those powdery milk is formed. So that is called spread line. So first it is freeze and then it is spread. And so that by spraying you form those powder like substance. So that is called spray dry. Okay? So basically if this is anybody asks you freeze dry, then this is what is freeze dry. Okay? Okay? That's it. Now if suppose this is forming ice, so you can put it in milk mein ice to milk ke andar ho jayega. So usko hatayenge guys. Milk ke andar se. Kya karte hai? Isi ne eject kar karte Minus 10 degree kar diya. Now, this is at certain pressure, okay? So, abhi pakar di ke aapka milk ka hai aur idhar ke ice hai. Abhi kya karte hai? Isko haam ek nozzle ka, this is a nozzle, this is called ejector. Now, here from I am spraying into atmosphere or a area of very lesser pressure. Whenever there is less pressure, if pressure is coming down and vapor pressure is going up, then it is going to escape. So, here sublimation occurs. This ice directly goes to the vapor phase over here, evaporation or sublimation. Because the pressure is less, so it will tend to directly go to the vapor phase, leaving behind only the milk powder. This is what happens. First freezing, then spraying. So, first some freeze kiya, cool kiya, uske wad low pressure me usko spray kar diya. Low pressure me spray kiya to, uske andar jo ice form hua hai, that tends to directly go to vapor state, sublimation. Thik hai? So, this was basically your boiling point, boiling and freezing that I need to explain over here, vapor pressure of solids. After this we will go through surface tension and viscosity. Thik hai?